So hi and welcome to this video where I'll basically be showing you a full exterior clean of a pretty neglected Renault Clio. So this was a car that I actually detailed around two years ago and did a full exterior detail of it where I did clay bar polish and it looked really great but unfortunately since then it hasn't actually been cleaned. I think maybe it's been cleaned once so the condition of it's got pretty neglected. So it's not too much in terms of dirt because the car isn't driven that often but there is a lot of mould and algae that's actually built up on the surface really sort of ruining the look of it and definitely needs to get removed so it's definitely kind of built up in sort of the areas like the wing mirror and also a bit of the trim tends to be kind of the problem so you've got as well quite a bit of dirt um, a lot of bird mess on the surface it didn't look great and also the alloys are pretty pretty dirty there's a lot of brake dust on there and the wheels as well don't look too good you can also see where the algae is actually built up on the front of the car in the trim. So I won't be doing a full exterior detail, instead I'll just be doing a thorough clean. I've only got around one to two hours hard to work on this car, so it's basically just trying to get as much of the dirt off as possible and just get it looking sort of 90% of the way. So the first thing I did was use a pressure washer to just remove as much of the dirt as possible that I could. So it did work a little bit on the algae, definitely worked a bit on the wheels and got a lot of the so burn So power washers there. are definitely safe to use on cars that are in quite pretty good nick but if you see any sort of really obvious signs of any peeling, fading or cracking in the paint then you should definitely sort of be a bit cautious when using a pressure washer and probably just go for a strong hose instead. But if you are using a pressure washer then to sort of use it safely you best off with a fan setting to kind of spread the pressure and also try and hold it around one to two metres away from the paint. You can get a little bit closer to get sort of these hard reach areas as you can see where I'm doing at this point. But yeah, don't get too close, you don't really want to sort of blast the paintwork because you can cause a little bit of damage doing that. So as you can see, some of the contaminants are pretty hard to remove. I think the reason for this is the fact that the car has sort of lost its coat in the sealant I put on around sort of two years ago. Hasn't had any reapplication since. So a lot of the dirt is pretty stuck to the surface so it can be a little bit harder to remove on a car that was coated you'd probably be able to blast most of this off quite easily it's definitely important to try and sort of thoroughly pressure wash the car before you actually start cleaning it with a contact wash as you're going to remove as lot of the dirt and Basically, it's going to avoid you having to sort of use a lot of friction to kind of remove the dirt with your washing it. So it's going to reduce the risk of scratches later on, just make the wash process a lot safer. So also it's important to kind of get really into the wheel arches as well, because that's an area that collects a lot of dirt that a lot of people kind of forget about. And it can sort of ruin the look of a really otherwise clean car. So definitely when you're doing the wheels, remember, don't forget about the wheel arches. So the next thing after the pressure wash, I jumped in with a pre-wash. So normally I would use a snow foam by the Hamber, but because this car was really super dirty, I instead used a traffic foam remover instead. So it is more aggressive and I wouldn't recommend using it as part of a routine wash as you're definitely going to strip the wax, but because this car was already filthy, it was best just to use an actual traffic foam remover. So I let that dwell on surface for just a couple of minutes because it was quite a hot day, and then used the pressure washer to rinse that surface down again. So then I went ahead and filled my wash bucket, so I wasn't actually using a car shampoo specifically for this, instead I was using an all purpose cleaner called Built Hammer Surfex HD and it's basically sort of similar to a traffic foam remover, it will strip wax but again there's not really anything left on the surface so that's not really an issue here, but it's more powerful cleaner than a typical car shampoo so it's definitely going to be a little bit more sort of capable of removing a lot of this traffic film. So then I went ahead and cleaned the wheels first and I did this using Built Hamber's Corosol which is their iron fallout remover. So basically just sprayed that on the surface and then left it for a couple of minutes and you can sort of see the amount of dirt and iron that's reacting there so that's what the purple sort of means. So after that I went in with a microfiber wash mitt. So this wash mitt I'd only ever use on the wheels, I wouldn't use this on the rest of the paintwork because I don't want to transfer any of that back onto the paint. I use microfiber wash mitts basically give the wheels a good scrub down, remove all this brake dust and all this dirt. And then for the harder to reach areas I used a soft bristle brush to basically get into all these little areas and just give the wheels a thorough clean.
I always recommend sort of doing one wheel at a time rather than going round and doing them all and then rinsing just because I don't want this sort of iron remover to dry on the surface. There is a little bit of potential for it to cause staining as you kind of get this purple and red reaction. It's kind of rare and you're generally going to be quite safe to be able to rinse it off even if it has only just dried on the surface but I think it's just generally safer to go around each wheel. You stop the dirt drying back onto the surface and you get a more thorough clean this way. So again, I'm using a pressure washer to remove all this with a fan setting and holding it around once two metres away so I don't cause any damage. So I did need to repeat this a couple of times because there was a lot of stubborn break dust on the surface. So I went in again with the iron remover and gave them a good scrub. And after that, I moved on to wheelbarrows. So I've just got this pretty cheap alloy brush to get to this. So just trying to get to much of the wheelbarrows as possible. It's pretty difficult on this car because it's kind of inaccessible, but you can definitely give them a quite a thorough clean. After that, I used a traffic zone remover to give the wheels a good scrub down. So once you're done actually cleaning the wheels, you can then move on to the paintwork. So for this, I am again using that Built Amber Surfex HD, but you can use car shampoo as well if you want to. So I'm also using a microfiber wash mitt by Kent, and it's basically really safe to use on the paintwork. It's not going to cause scratches like sponges and brushes will, but it's also really effective at cleaning. So I always start from top to bottom to allow the dirt to run off the car, and it also allows you to clean the dirtiest areas of the car last. So you're not kind of transferring them back onto those cleaner sections. So instead of using a two bucket wash method, I instead use multiple mitts. So once I've wiped down a section or a panel, I'll basically give the mitt a pressure wash and then I'll change them periodically if they get too dirty. I find that this is a lot safer on the paintwork because although the two bucket wash method does allow you to kind of rinse, rinse your mitt in a new bucket, it does kind of risk a little bit of transferring that dirt and grit back on there because I just don't think it cleans it as thoroughly as possible. So pressure washing and just using multiple wash mitts throughout the wash process is definitely going to be a lot safer. I also like to pressure wash each section down after I've done it rather than letting the shampoo sort of dwell on there and leaving it till the end. I think it's a lot better and particularly when you're working in hot conditions like it was on this day. Also, to make sure you're not actually causing any more scratches, it's really important not to actually scrub at the paintwork. It's fine to do on things like the glass and also like the trim, but definitely don't do it on the paintwork because you're definitely going to kind of increase that risk of causing scratches. So just be very gentle and keep rinsing your microfiber wash mitts. Make sure you're not transferring that dirt back onto cleaner sections. Then to get the areas of the trim that still had algae remaining, I used a bristle brush basically, just to give them a good scrub, to get rid of any of the kind of green algae that was that was still still on the surface and make sure it was still really cleaned. Then I went ahead and did the final pressure wash of the entire car, just making sure I'd got all the car shampoo off there, stop any that had potentially dried throughout the process. So it's really important to kind of go over it with high pressure, just to make sure you've got everything off the surface. Then after that, I went ahead and dried it with a microfiber towel. So it's really important to use one that's clean, soft, and quite plush, quite high pile. So this is gonna be what's most safe on the paintwork. So I also used a quick detailer called Sonax Brilliant Shine Detailer. because I didn't have time to wax the car and still wanted to add some protection on. It also kind of acts as sort of a lubricant when you're drying to again, reduce the risk of causing scratches. So this is a really good detail because it basically leaves a very, very hydrophobic coating on the surface. So it kind of acts a little bit as a, more of a spray sealant than a spray wax and it will add some gloss as well. And then the final thing to do was just to give the glass a bit of a clean with a waffle weave microfiber towel and a glass cleaner. So I definitely prefer using waffle weave microfiber rather than like a soft plush microfiber that you would tend to use on the paintwork because that tends to sort of leave sort of fibres actually on the glass, sort of stick to it and you can really see them in bright light. So using waffle weave really helps to prevent this. Then I went ahead and did the final touches, which was applying a tyre dressing to the wheels. So I really think this kind of completes the look of the car and 
don't really think that sort of a, a car looks particularly clean if you don't do this step, particularly on tyres that are a little bit older. So for this, I was using a soft foam applicator and Meguiar's Endurance Tire Gel just to give the tyres a little bit of a shine and kind of restore that black look. So as you can see, hopefully the car looks a lot better now. All the algae's gone, the tyres look a lot better and the paint's looking a lot shinier. So it's also got a little bit of protection on there until I, I can do a full for a detail of it again. So thanks very much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it and if you have then definitely be sure to hit the like button, comment down below if you've got any questions and subscribe for weekly detailing videos. Also if you want a little bit more information about this process then definitely be sure to head over to the website. I'll leave a link for that in the description called autocarehq.com and that'll take you through the full process of detailing this car.